Okay, we're at the hour. So, good evening, everybody. This is a, a special evening for us in uh, the Iraqi Orthodontic Society. This is the 17th webinar, and we've uh, maybe we took a rest of something like, uh, oh, sorry, there's something wrong. Yeah, start over again. <laughs> okay, so good evening, everybody. It's been almost a year. We haven't had any webinars, and uh, so we wanted to go big this time. We invited somebody who is very prestigious in the orthodontic community, um, and we are lucky to have uh, Professor Harris Khan from uh, Pakistan, and he is a professor in the National University of Medical Sciences. Uh, Dr. Khan graduated in 2004 and attained a fellowship degree in orthodontics in 2010. He also attained another fellowship degree in 2015 in orthodontics as well. He's written a very well-known book in orthodontics uh, about brackets, and I'm sure every one of you uh, have seen that uh, book. I sure hell do, and uh, I teach it in the University of Baghdad to um, our students. It's a very valuable book. If you really haven't had, uh, haven't seen it, I do advise you to see it. Uh, the it's uh, available in English and Korean, but I think we'll do with English. He has written numerous articles in national and international journals. He's also a reviewer of many international journals like BMC Oral Health, Peer uh, Journal, Frontier, and the list goes on. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Professor Khan and uh, please, uh, the stage is yours. And thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Thanks a lot. I'm really obliged that uh, you invited me and uh, for this amazing introduction, uh, I will share my screen. So as Dr. Akram introduced me, uh, I'm Dr. Haris Khan. Um, I did my first fellowship in 2010 and uh, from Pakistan and second from Ireland in 2015. So presently I'm working as a professor of orthodontics in National University of Medical Sciences. So uh, as Professor Akram introduced you, uh, I've written a book uh, in orthodontics uh, back in 2015. And this book is also available in Korean version. Uh, the Korean version is, uh, you know, the Korean translation was done in 2020. So uh, apart from that, uh, I developed some websites and apps uh, with my friend Mohammed al muzian And the, uh, uh, there is a website and app that is Orthopar. That's a free app. And you can do your clinical audit of your cases by peer assessment rating. You can use the web page or you can uh, use the you know android or ios system um, uh, we also developed a, a website named uh, interactive visual online communication basically for clinics and in future we are uh, you know working on uh, to uh, you know incorporate in artificial intelligence in this system and also uh, i run a website named auto exam along with my friend Mohammed Dalusian. and i must you know um, uh, admit that I have financial interest uh, in these two websites. So a brief history. Uh, I will keep it quick because I'm trying to make it uh, 45 to, uh, minutes to one hour lecture. So, you know, the history of uh, bracket is found in uh, Egyptian culture, Greek culture, and it's all depend on common sense. And uh, the humans initially started by this basic appliance. The first appliance was introduced by a French, I think, uh, peripheral chart. And uh, it was horseshoe shaped. And after time, there was modification needed in it. And all these modifications, if you see, they are all based on common sense. Like, but it, it was initially uh, horseshoe shaped and there was bias in it, incorporated in it to engage the teeth. And the concept was to, uh, you know, align the teeth in an arch form, like a horseshoe shape. There was a metal bar. Um, they, uh, you know, attach uh, some, uh, you know, um, material uh, to make bite blocks. They attach pins to engage the teeth. Uh, 
uh, they attached you know elastic threads uh, you know metal pins uh, gold threads to align the teeth over the period of time um, because there was many orthodontists who made this modification and you know the concept was simple use common sense and in 1990 uh, what our textbook used to say that edward engel uh, make his first e arch right and uh, then he made the ribbon arch um, uh, pin and tube and then the ribbon arch right and when i went through the literature uh, the pin and tube appliance was made in 1886 first the initial concept was given by johnson and uh, uh, later on in 1910 it was given by uh, you know edward engel pin and tube but most of our textbook like contemporary orthodontics and most of textbook say that it was made by engel so the original concept of pin and tube was given by johnson back in 1886 so in engel time the concept was uh, to simply align the tooth and do the cases non extraction uh, uh there's a you know uh, a story about it like what engel extracted uh, premolar teeth of uh, his wife and he was never able to close spaces so he changed his philosophy from extraction to non extraction so all his appliances were based on non extraction so if you see these appliances uh, uh there are you know screws there are rods and the concept is to align the teeth um, by expanding the arches uh professor fm if i'm fast just let me know i will try to keep it slow that's fine that's fine yes so in 1915 ribbon arch uh, this is ribbon arch um Then eventually, the Edgewise appliance in 1928 by Edward Engel. The Edgewise appliance was, in fact, present before Engel because, according to some articles of 1930s in Dental Cosmos, uh, the first Edgewise appliance was introduced somewhere in 1910 by Jason Coop. Uh, no, that was something. Uh, there was a guy named Coop. It's not Jason Coop because Jason Coop is a modern orthodontist, contemporary orthodontist. So, Kelvin Key, sorry. it was introduced in 1910 by kelvin keys and uh, then a modification was made it was basically half cut tube and uh, the tube dimension was somewhere it was for round tube so they cut the front end of the tube so angle took that concept and made a you know uh, bracket of um, uh, you know edge wise bracket of 22 but 28 slot dimensions that is in inches so the edge wise system was pre- previously present before angle angle simply gave a you know more favorable dimension uh, the uh, you know uh, pin and tube uh, system was before present angle invented it but angle made it more favorable so over the period of time what i have learned uh, that it's all a mat- matter of you know wisdom and taking initiative like what uh, i think a couple of months ago i was discussing this uh, uh, thing of taking initiative with one of my friend because um um uh, we saw you know brackets of tyre hamid the double twin slots bracket so tyre hamid made a twin slot bracket and he you know incorporated the two to slot and also the over knit slot in his single bracket so like what uh the twin slot bracket was present before that like what if you see the demon system uh demons uh, in demon brackets the self ligating bracket they have a, a twin slot of 22 uh, uh you know 0.022 slot plus a 0.016 slot in a single bracket so tahir came up with a different concept and he made a 018 slot and he patented his own bracket and now he's giving lectures for it so it's all a matter of taking initiative sometimes we think that like what uh what happen if we make a 22 slot like what what happen if i make a vertical slot people will laugh on me but i think it's not the case you can make a slot if you are confident about it you can go for a patent you can design a bracket because throughout history it happened like this so i will ask the people uh, that if they have a concept they can design it and make it many a times these things are quite successful so these are the modifications over the period of time uh, if you see that uh, angle brackets were single slot and if it's if the bracket is single slot right uh, it has poor rotational control it has more friction to decrease this initially they increase the wings of the bracket to have a better better rotational control that was done by lewis and lang 
and then Sivan introduced the twin brackets that are also called the Siamese bracket, which are used in contemporary orthodontics, uh, you know, in terms of twin brackets, the metal brackets. So in 1972, uh, Lawrence Centrio, he was a private practitioner. And at that time he spent, uh, he worked with a uh, you know, company because he was not satisfied with edgewise brackets. So he worked with a private uh, company and uh, from my knowledge, uh, what I have read from different books, at that time he spent $10,000 and uh, he made his own bracket system and he incorporated all the three, you know, order bands within his brackets. So they were called, uh, you know, edge -wise, uh, the angle brackets were edgewise brackets and these brackets were called pre-adjusted edgewise bracket because all the three order bands, the first order, the second order, and the third order bands, were incorporated in these brackets. Theoretically, in these brackets, no wire bending was required. So after that, uh, you know, uh, the system came on self-ligation. Initially, passive self-ligating packets were made, and then active self-ligating packets were made. So I want to discuss the basic mechanics. So I'll discuss about NGO, because if you understand what NGO did, uh, you would uh, be able to select your brackets. And also if someone want to design a new system, a new system instead of, you know, in terms of torque or in terms of prescription, you can develop a system. Like what before this presentation, uh, we were having the, I was having this chat with uh, uh, Professor Akram and uh, Professor Akram was of the view that in future there would be, you know, uh, in-house, uh, uh, insignia brackets because you know 3d printers are um, metal 3d printers are incorporating the system and in some point in time uh, many orthodontists will be printing brackets in their offices so if you understand the prescription how the prescription work then you can also develop your in-house brackets the making of orthodontic prescription so as i told you that andrew made the pre-adjusted advice bracket. And his concept was quite clear to make the system simple, not to do complex wire bending. So before end your times, this type of wire bending was done. So these are first order bands. What end you did, he measured the prominence of the teeth, both in the upper and the lower arch. And he found that some certain, uh, you know, uh, he went through, you know, non orthodontic treated model and he made the prominence of these teeth. And he draw a line and made the prominence. I've uh, shown you the method how he made the prominence. So he came up with these prominence values. And if you see here, Yes. So if you see here, the, in the maxillary arch, the center incisor has more prominence than the lateral incisor, right? So if the central incisor is more, uh, you know, forward than the lateral incisor, then the bracket, you know, um, must have less prominence for the central incisor and more prominence for the lateral incisor. When the bracket has more prominence from, for the lateral incisor, the bracket would be more outward. And when we pass a straight wire appliance, that straight wire appliance will push the teeth that has um, more bracket prominence. So if you see upper, the central, ins the lateral incisor has more prominence. But if we see here, when he built the bracket, the bracket has, uh, sorry, the lateral has less prominence. And in bracket, the lateral has more prominence. So the lateral incisor bracket will be more prominent and the wire will push it inside. And the central incisor, uh, you know, tooth has more prominence than the lateral incisor and its bracket has less prominence. So someone once asked me a question that why not, uh, like what he made the system, he started from 2.1 and then, you know, uh, made these values like this. So I personally believe that this was all about molars. Because Andrew was also, uh, you know, in favor of the concept to interchange the molar, um, uh, you know, uh, tubes or bands 
or uh, you know therapeutic class 2 or therapeutic class 3 finish cases in which you know canine relation is finished in class 1 and molar relation is either class 2 or class 3 so if the molar prominence is the same uh, you can interchange the brackets without you know concerning uh, the first order bands so he started from here so if you see here the lateral uh, the lower lateral and the central have the same prominence the central has more prominence than the upper lateral incisor so incorporated the prominence in this way so if someone has a question he can ask it in the middle or uh, and professor can, can let me know that there's a question about that thing so this is the basic concept of prominence so that if the distance from the point a to the point b is large the bracket prominence would be small and if this distance is small like what a to b is inversely proportional from b to c if it's large that would be small and vice versa so that basically for prominence because like what if a tooth is less prominent you have to increase the prominence in the bracket because all the brackets you know wire is aligning them so if a bracket has more prominence the wire will push the bracket inside and the tooth will have less prominence eventually the effective prominence would be would decrease so this is first order band that was incorporated in the system then comes the second order band in second uh, sorry that is basically that is also first order band and uh, i will also show the rotation band are also first order so from this complex wire bending of first order bands angle introduced uh, sorry uh, uh, andrew introduced everything into his brackets and if you see the prominence, different brackets have different prominence. The central has less prominence than the lateral incisor. The canine has less prominence than the lateral incisor. So when the wire would align these teeth, the central incisor will slightly go outward and the lateral incisor will slightly go inward. The canine will also slightly go, uh, you know, uh, come outward as compared to the lateral incisor having more prominence than the lateral incisor. So, other thing in first order band is rotation. And uh, we see this phenomena mostly in, uh, you know, when we are retracting the canines, right? What Andrew did, Andrew increased the, you know, prominence of one of his slot, right? This is an example of a canine bracket in the lower. So what Andrew did, Andrew increased the prominence of his mesial slot. Uh, clinicians uh, 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 who have, you know, uh, retracted canines, they know very well when we retract the canine individually or even in a mass retraction, many a times we have seen that canine is distally in rotated, like what mesial part of the canine is coming up, of, uh, you know, outward, buckly, and distal part is going inward. So to avoid this problem, and you increase prominence, in his brackets, in the mesial slots, in translation series bracket, so that uh, the canine or, or the tooth which is going in translation would not be rotated. That was true for buccal second teeth, not for the incisor. So the rotational control, to improve the rotational control, he did this, the anti-rotational, you know, movement, or the anti-rotational, you know, uh, modification in the buccal segment brackets, in the canines and the premolars. So another important aspect is the offset in the bracket, that also in the first order. When Andrew made this measurement, and it was well known at that time, uh, the lower molar have zero degree offset, while the upper molar have 10 degree offset in ideal normal occlusion. Right? So if you see these examples, uh, what he did, I hope it will be clear. Yes. He made the offset. The mesial part of the tube opening in the upper molars is more toward the, you know, uh, enamel surface and the distal part is away. So he introduced an inset in the tube, right? So many times, you know, the uh, postgrad students, uh, they confuse it. That they say that there's a molar offset and there's an inset in the tube. So there's a offset in the molar and inset in the you know, tube. 
So the mesial part of the tube has an inset. It's um, uh, mesially um, that is close. The opening is close to the enamel and this leads away from it. So when a straight wire align will align the teeth, it will move the tooth mesially outward and distally inward because we are using the straight wire appliance. And in lower arch, there's zero degree offset. So the low arch tube is straight. So the rule of offset is correct if you are, uh, you know, uh, finishing a case in class one uh, occlusion. But if someone is finishing a case in therapeutic class two or therapeutic class three, the upper molar should have zero degree offset rather than 10 degree offset. So there's some interchange of tubes. I will explain it uh, in future slides. So important of molar offset. So as I told you that um, there's 10 degree offset uh, in the molars when it's class one finish. And uh, there is uh, there should be ideally zero degree offset when it's a therapeutic class two or therapeutic class three finish. My personal thinking is like what uh, I'm on the first picture. If you see the molar, if there is a zero degree offset, the mesobuccal cusp will touch the lower buccal groove and there would be premature contacts, right? And if we move to the next example, and that is therapeutic class two finish. Here, the cusp is not over the you know uh, lower uh, buccal groove; it is in the embryo. So, to have a good occlusion, so like what? If you see a case uh, in finishing, and if the buccal overjet is increased, you will see black triangles between the teeth or open spaces between the teeth, and the occlusion looks bad. So for the molars. Um, because the molar mesobuccal cusp is supposed to come in the embryo between the lower five, the uh, sec uh, second premolar and the lower first uh, molar, it should have a zero degree offset for an ideal occlusion. Same is true for class three because the uh, mesobuccal cusp of the upper molar is in the embryo between the lower two molars. So when finishing in a therapeutic class two or class three, use a de zero degree offset bracket. So in the market, there's no zero degree offset bracket available or tube available or band available. So the clinician advice that uh, to uh, uh, make this happen in MPT system, you can take the uh, uh, you know lower tube or band from the contralateral side, from the you know uh, opposite side of the arch, um, from the from the lower arch from the contralateral side and place it because in the lower molar, the offset is zero. So you will offset of zero in MPT system, it's minus 10 degree torque that is close to minus 14 degree torque, right? And so the, your torque would be close to the uh, necessary uh, torque and uh, your offset would be zero. So that is what is required. Some clinician also propose like, but uh, there's no evidence for this because uh, this was once told by one of my teacher he said that when the molar mesialize forward, the molar come in a narrow area, right? And when it's come in a narrow area, you, you have to give, give it less torque than in a class one position or in a more distal position. So minus 10 degree torque would be more optimum than a minus 14 degree torque where there are chances for the roots coming out of it. Um, but I will discuss something about it when I will show you the Andrew talks because in Andrew translation series bracket, if the tooth was translating um, forward, he increased the torque, negative torque, because he was of the concept that when the molar mesialize, the pelter root is bigger, right? And the pelter root, uh, you know, uh, hang, and there's premature contact of the pelter cusp. So they increase the, you know, the uh, torque in the uh, translation series bracket. Uh, translation series brackets are when you are, you know, moving the molars forward or backward. And the same concept was utilized by MBT uh, system. Like what the research finding that in ideal occlusion or in normal occlusion, uh, the normal torque is minus nine degree on the molar. But MBT people, uh, you know, McLaughlin, um, Hugo Trevesi and, and John Bennett, they made it minus 14. And uh, their defense was the same. Their proposition was the same that when we mesialize the canine, or they have seen in their cases that in most of their cases, the pelter cusp was hanging and the pelter cusp was giving premature contact. So they increased the negative torque in the packet. So I don't know which concept is correct, but 
uh, in MBT, that was a uh, reason or a theory that was proposed for minus 14 degree talk. And when you interchange the brackets, some you know people also advocate that minus 10 degree talk is favorable because you are moving to a narrow area. So frankly, I never grabbed this concept. Might be uh, at the end of this presentation, uh, Professor Akram might give some of his thoughts about this issue. So before end its time, uh, in advice bracket, uh, the second order bands were given in the bracket. So you made the slot angular over the bracket in a major digital dimension to inc incorporate the second order bands. So an important thing in this one is uh, the molars, right? So tooth angulation, these are the entry values, plus five degree, plus nine degree. So I move to the back slide. Uh, I will explain it later on. In molars, for molars, uh, the offset, uh, you know, uh, and that angulation of the molar was five degree in normal occlusion. And it was, I think he measured 120 cases, non-orthodontic treated cases, Lawrence sent to you to, you know, come up with these values. And they, the lower molar have a angulation of positive two degree. So this was tip. The tip is also called sometime angulation, the mesodistal angulation. And tip is something different from tipping. Tipping is a type of tooth movement because some, you know, post-grad student confuse the two things. So these were the angulation values, uh, which were uh, measured by uh, uh, Lawrence Centrio. So it's central incisor are five degree, nine degree, right? So for canine, it's 11 degree. In endo translation series bracket, he made some modification in the tip of the brackets. And in minimum translation brackets, like what if you are going to uh, like what dislice or mesialize the tooth by 0 0.1 to 2 millimeter, it's minimum translation up to 4 millimeter from 2.1, it's moderate medium translation, more than 4 millimeter maximum translation. So for minimum translation, he added 2 degree extra tip. If you are dislicing a teeth, like what um, most of you students or uh, clinician know that, like what if I'm mesializing a tooth, right? Uh, if I dis if I'm retracting a canine, the crown is going more backward than the root. So to do it, Andrew said that like what if you are retracting the canine up to 2.1 millimeter from zero to 2.1 millimeter, the bracket must have an extra two degree tip. If you are retracting it from two to four millimeter, 2.1 to four millimeter, it should have three degree tip. And if the Retraction is more than four millimeter. The bracket must have an, uh, you know, an extra four degree tip. So this is a chart showing that the standard, uh, like what I will discuss about canine. Canine has an eleven degree tip in the upper canine. There is an eleven degree tip. So in upper canine, there is an eleven degree tip. So in minimum translation, uh, if you are Dislicing, retracting the canine by up to 2.1 millimeter, the tip is increased by two degree. If you're retracting by it between 2.1 to 4 millimeter, it's 14 degree. Uh, yes, can I? And if you are retracting the canine by greater than four millimeter, it's 15 degree. So this is something uh, you know important to understand that when you retract the canine, uh, because in modern system like what we use a single bracket from the Roth prescription or MBT prescription. And many a time when we have completed our retraction and uh, we went for our X-ray, we have seen that the tip of the canine is lagging or if we went for a clinical examination, we feel that the crown of the canine is retracted more than the you know, uh, root because we are no longer using these uh, you know, uh, translation series brackets. Let me clear these points. So apart from first order band, right? Uh, the other important thing is uh, crown, you know, uh, um, in the molars is their angulation, the second order bands. For a class one finish, you need a five degree angulation. For a class two finish, you need a zero degree angulation in the tooth, right? 
so you have to uh, uh, keep in mind uh, uh, this philosophy that for a class 2 finish full class class 2 finish or a class 3 finish it should be there the important aspect that must be kept in mind uh like what in mbt system there is the built in tip is 0 degree right in endo system the built in tip is 5 degree so it's a, you know many times it's exam questions uh like what there's a, a thing called built in tip and one is called effective you know uh, tip or torque built in is what is built within the bracket and effective is what what is expressed by the bracket so in endo system the built in tip was 5 degree right within the tube but he placed the tube uh, or band more gingival uh, uh, measly so the effective tip was also 5 degree in roth or mbt system they start placing the you know tube or bands parallel to the buckle cusp so by doing this they were in, uh, you know the effective tip become 10 degree so in mbt system uh that was basically a flaw in roth system so in mbt system they keep uh, you know they kept the uh, bracket uh, or the tube placement technique of roth on the molars and they decrease the tip to 0 degree so in mbt system the effective tip is 5 degree because you place a, bracket, a tube in such a way that the effective tip is 5 degree when a straight wire align the tooth but the built in tip is 0 degree and also um like what uh, as i told you that in therapeutic class 2 or therapeutic class 3 you do not have the required offset that is made by the manufacturer for the upper molars so you interchange the bracket you take the bracket from the contralateral side from the lower arch for the upper molars so these have either 0 degree tip or 2 degree tip uh, depending on the prescription so it's almost close to 0 it's not you, because 5 degree tip will cause premature contacts if you you know place it by the same technique the third is uh, you know uh, twisting the wire either you use the edgewise appliance and you do twist in the wire or the torque so what and you did he placed a you know slot at an angle so these are the torque values uh, an important thing i want to uh, tell to the clinician and the students that you cannot make a class 1 finish on a you know a moderate or severe class 2 case when you are doing a camouflage or a moderate or severe class 3 when you are doing a camouflage so and you also realize this thing and he developed like what for a class 2 case he decreased the torque of the bracket so that the inside the upper inside should be more upright and he increased the negative torque of the bracket so that when we are proclining the lower incisors in a class 2 case where the ojet is increased our incisors should remain upright so in, uh, sorry he increased the torque by 4 degree um, in the upper he decreases by 2 degree right so the lower incisor uh, should compensate the overjet sorry i will remain back and in the lower arch what and you did uh, because in class 3 cases to do a camouflage we need to procline the upper incisor and we need to retrocline the lower incisors so he increased the torque in the upper brackets the upper torque was 12 degree so the upper incisors are proclined and the lower incisors are upright so increase the minus 6 torque in the lower bracket so basically mbt took this minus 6 torque for the lower incisor from this system so that the lower incisor should remain upright because in most of our cases the incisors are proclined so this concept is also present uh, you know in strainer sticks or chevrons because if you see this example uh, if the a and b is uh, i will go to the extremes of examples similar concept was given by strainers like what if you have a skeletal class 2 the a and b is 6 the pin sizes should be upright uh, the distance from the any plane should decrease and the lower sizes should be proclined to compensate the overjet and in case of class 3 case finish where the nb is minus 6 or minus 4 the upper incisor should procline to compensate the over you know uh, to uh, correct the overjet and the lower incisor should remain upright so i'll show you a clinical example 
it would be quick so uh, there is a relation between tip and torque if you do not correct the tip um, uh, or the torque spaces will remain open within the arch this is the example a patient with increased overjet so i corrected the overjet so as the relation was skeletal class 2 so I have to finish the case with upright upper incisors and slightly proclined lower incisors because it was a you know a moderate to severe skeletal class two. So this is a skeletal class three case, and as I showed you, you cannot do a, a you know a class one finish, ideal finish, on a skeletal class two or skeletal class three case. So in this case, as it was skeletal class three. The natural outcome was slightly propline inside that because I was going for the camouflage and slightly to climb door incisors. So I will come to a very important thing, and that is about maxillary first molar torque. In minimum translation, it was minus 13 degree, as you uh, you know uh, previously told you. The concept is to avoid peltal cusp hanging. And in medium translation, it was minus 14, and in maximum it was 15. And I believe that uh, it's very clear that minus 14 torque in MBT system is taken from medium translation series packet to avoid the you know hanging of peltal cusp. Another important concept uh, in bracket manufacturing is talk in the base versus face. Though it's controversial in the literature, but ideally they used to say the talk should be built within the base of the bracket. Because if it's in the face of the bracket, uh, when you align the tooth, there would be vertical errors. And uh, uh, if you place the bracket, uh, you know, more incisor, it depends on the shape of the tooth. But if you place a bracket more incisor, uh, there would be more expression of positive torque. And if you place the bracket more gingival, there would be some expression or some uh, you know, effective torque. Uh, uh, there would be more expression of negative torque. Uh, or if positive torque is built within the bracket, some torque, effective torque would be negated. Another thing is wagon wheel concept. That is, if you increase a torque within the bracket or with the help of fire by four degree, the tip will decrease by one degree. That is called wagon wheel effect. So the problem with Andrew system was it has a large inventory. So there was, as you see, in Andrew system to deal with different types of malocclusion, and there was 12 set of mandibular bracket, maxillary brackets and 11 set of mandibular brackets. So you have to use a combination between all of them. So Andrew was not popular. What he did is Roth was popular at that time. Roth was publishing uh, lectures on uh, you know articulations of models, CO uh, centric occlusion and centric relationship. So Andrew sent his models, uh, you know, bracket set to Roth because Roth was popular, so that he can use those sets and then you know he can write some articles on it. So from what I know, from my personal knowledge, like what, from what I read from the books and what is my understanding, Roth made his own bracket set because making a single bracket set is more, you know, uh, uh, acceptable proposition for the manufacturer than making 11 or 12 different bracket sets. And because if there are so much bracket sets, you need specialized training for it. But if there's a single bracket set, it means even general dentists can do those cases. So Roth bracket become acceptable both for the you know uh, 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 manufacturers and the you know dentists and the orthodontists. So Roth has more acceptability. So over the period of time, Roth brackets became more popular. So ideal bonding, uh, I don't know. Uh, I will just simply tell you that uh, ideally uh, the bracket should be bonded at the place where the manufacturer have asked you to place it, right? Because if they have done some research, like what Andrew did some research, and he found that if his bracket is placed at uh, FA point, that is the facial axis uh, of the you know uh, midpoint of the facial axis. Uh, FA point is the midpoint of the facial axis of the clinical crown, or initially that was LA point. That is the lo uh, long axis, uh, you know, 
that was LACC, long axis of the clinical point, and LA point was the midpoint of LACC. So Andrew, Andrew did some you know, research, and he asked that the package should be placed at the middle of the tooth. I don't know about Roth. Roth also proposed it, but over the period of time, uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, bracket positioning, uh, you know, movement charts available in the market. Even the bracket manufacturer companies, uh, you know, gave their own charts without doing any research. So as I told you previously, if you place a bracket more incisor, the slot of the bracket, like what it will be, uh, if it's upper incisor, that would be uh, like what uh, facing downward toward the lower gingiva. And a straight wire will, you know, make it uh, straight. So positive torque would be expressed more. And if the bracket has built-in positive torque, so the effective torque might be more than the built-in uh, positive torque. And if the bracket has built-in negative torque, the effective torque would be less than the, uh, you know, uh, uh, less than the built-in negative torque. And if you place a bracket more gingival, uh, the slot will be, you know, away from the uh, occlusal plane and negative talk, more negative talk would be expressed. So idly, I've divided this in zones. The zone two is the ideal position. Zone one is increased positive uh, talk zone. Uh, like what uh, I asked it more positive talk zone because I was measuring it uh, uh, according to Andrew's system. But if you place a bracket here, which was basically in the zone one, uh, two previously, if it was in the zone two like this way, facing straight, when you place it uh, in the zone uh, one, it would be forcing, facing upward toward the gingiva in case of a incisor. So the straight wire will, you know, rotate the slot this way and uh, move the, uh, you know, uh, root of the uh, tooth closer to the cortex and more negative torque would be expressed. And, you know, the vice versa will happen in zone three. So some students, when they read my book, they confuse it that in zone one, there's most positive uh, torque. So more the positive torque would be expressed. I actually measured it this way uh, by uh, Andrew Way, in which he measured the torque values. So if you place the bracket, obviously the bracket torque would be on the opposite of this. A vertical shift of three millimeter can change the torque angle by around 15 degrees. So in some cases, depending on the curvature of the deep, this change, this much change can come. Propose that torque variation 10 to 50 degree may arise from a vertical inaccurate placement of one millimeter. So literature is available. We say that the variation in the torque with the vertical position is not right. So I will show you that uh, how people have, you know, placed brackets over the period of time. So charts, everyone gave their own system. So at that time when I went through the literature, there was 20 different bracket system. My most favorable is like for premolars, I placed the bracket according to the margin ridges, right? Uh, for the, uh, uh, from the premolar, the first premolar, I transfer that measurement from bracket gauge to the lateral incisor. I keep the canine bracket, five millimeter more upper than the lateral incisors, so shall, shall I should get, you know, canine guided occlusion in the uh, uh, future. And my central and the canine bracket are at the same level in the upper arch. In lower arch, all the four incisor brackets are at the same level, uh, which is at the level of the premolars. The canine bracket is 0.5 millimeter more gingival placed, as, uh, yes, more gingival placed than the uh, central and lateral incisor and the first premolar. And the premolar bracket, I mostly place it according to the margin reach. Even I try to place the bracket of the premolar, first premolar at the margin reach and match this position with the lateral incisor. So this method of uh, was initially given by Ricketts back in 1970s in his bioprogressive therapy, uh, his technique of bioprogressive therapy. And later on, uh, you know, uh, uh, written in seminar in orthodontic spec language. I think seminars were published in 2007. An important thing in bracket slot is that, as I told you, that built-in talk is one thing and effective talk is another thing. So that is wire play, it's a play of the uh, you know uh, wire, the looseness of the wire within the bracket. 
So in first order direction, I will go to the chart. I want to uh, stick to the formula. If you see here, on all the rectangular wires in a two-to slot bracket, there's very little wire play. And also on 0.0, .0 in round wire, I try to scare it. In all the rectangular wire, there is very small, it's in millimeter, there's very small wire play. And if we see this wire play, because we are interested in degrees, and mostly our working wire is 1925 SS. And on 1925 SS, the wire play is around about less than two degree for first order bands. So if someone is doing a retraction even on a, a lighter wire like a 20 SS uh, or a, like what 1622 SS, uh, in first order direction, the wire play simply do not matter. When you are altering brackets, like from one company to another company, you must consider the first order bands. Like, but if one lateral bracket is broken, people use another company bracket and they land themselves into trouble while doing so. So in second order direction, the wire play is like what more important uh, in the vertical direction than in the, you know, uh, in the vertical direction, in the, I guess in the vertical direction than in the horizontal direction. So if we see here, in a 2 to uh, 2 0 bracket there is less play than a 1622 because here we are comparing the 16 dimension with the 2 0 direction dimension so this is a preposition of most of the people because i know many clinician who do canine retractions on a, a round steel wire like a 20 ss because when you are retracting a canine it's a second order band that matters it's not the third order bands that matters so some clinician used to do it but I think when the span of the you know wire increases, the flexibility increases, and then you lose some tip. Though the play is less, but in flexibility you lose the tip. So they are very small play. But you like, but on a 1925 SS, the play of the wire in the second order direction is less than two dp. The most important is in terms of torque. And in terms of torque, uh, like what the play is more important and we have seen it a lot. Like what in a, uh, on a 10 degree wire, uh, sorry, on a 1925 SS wire in a, a two zero slot, uh, yes, in a two zero slot, the play is around about 9.6. It's in the decision, it is 9.6 to 10 degree, even 10.5. So in most of my cases, I used to do retraction on 1925 of the incisors and the play is 10 degree. So understanding the play is very important, especially in terms of torque. If you understand the play, you will understand the prescription. So you, this is basically raw prescription. In entry prescription, the maxillary incisor torque, I will go back to entry. If I, I would be quick. Yes. If you see the maxillary incisor, because I simply want to give you this concept. This is seven degree, the percentile incisor, right? Try to minimize it. In Roth system, that is 12 degree. And in MBT system, in the central incisor, I'm only discussing the maxillary central incisor, that is 17 degree, right? The upper central incisor tall. In Andrew's time, uh, Mostly either gold wires or stainless steel wires. You know, stainless steel was available at that time, but mostly gold wires were used. So the wire that at that time that was mostly used that was uh, like what uh, twenty one point five, the final wire multiplied by uh, uh, twenty seven point five. So seven degree torque was built within the bracket, and almost you know six degree torque was expressed by those brackets. 
in Roth system, Roth did it at 21-25 wire, right? The final wire in Roth system, most of the people use is 21-25. On 21-25 wire, in a two-two slot, there's four degree play or 4.1 degree play. So the built-in torque is 12 degree. So if the built-in torque is 12 degree and there's four degree play in the wire, the effective torque of 4.1 degree, that is 7.8 or 7.9. In MBT system, they made the torque 17 degree. And they asked you to do the retraction and use the final wire as 1925 SS wire, the working wire. So the 1925 SS wire has a 9.6 degree or a 10 degree play. So it means that the effective torque in this system would be 10, uh, 10 degree or 9.6 degree and the effective torque would be 7.4 degree. So it's rotated the same. They simply changed the mechanics. They educated a different mechanics, but the torque is the same as entry values. So they simply change the system. Like what, uh, today I decided that I make my own bracket. So I will use a wire where there's a different play. So I will come to this example and I say that, no, do not do retraction on 1925 SS wire, do retraction on 1825 SS wire on a two to slot. So I will check this chart and I will check that what happened on a two to slot. So this is on a two to slot, slot with two to. This is on 11.8 degree torque play in a two to slot. So I will say it's 12 degree play, right? So I say that do not use MBT system, use my Harris system and use 1825 SS wire in your bracket. And I will ask the manufacturer that make a give a different name to this bracket and make the torque like what there's 12 degree play in the bracket for effective torque, make the torque from 17 degree to 19 degree, right? So, I can make my own prescription if I know the original torque values and if I know the play in the system. So this is my personal understanding that most of the MBT work was uh, for a better understanding of the player in the system and they made, the, made their own brackets. An interesting thing in Roth bracket was initially there was, you know, major uh, rotation bands incorporated in the system. And like, but when you retract the canines, you have an option and there, there was medial in rotation of the canine. So that was to prevent is the distal out rotation during the retraction of the canine. Similar was true for premolars, but eventually this thing was you know, removed from the MBT system. Some cases I believe that was a good innovation that was eventually lost. So as I told you, Roth eventually made the prescription. Um, but later on, he realized uh, that it cannot be done for all, all these you know, uh, uh, cases. So he also made some super talk prescription that become that were not very famous. Like, but give me a minute. Yes. This is Roth super talk, extra talk prescription, because many of us know this prescription, because I mean, Vector tell us this prescription. So Roth, initially became famous from a single set of brackets, right? But later on, Roth realized that you cannot deal all the cases with a single set of brackets. So he said for some cases, like what class 2D2, you need an extra torque, right? You need an uh, on the central and the laterals. So he made super torque prescriptions. So this is an example of super torque. He introduced 17 degree torque. So as I was telling you that things like what the pin and tube applies, uh, sorry, the ribbon arch, the vertical slot, the edge wise slot was present before angle system. And angle in making by small modification and doing some innovation, uh, he was not hesitant for small modification. He became popular. So the plus 17 torque in the upper central incisor, the minus 14 torque in the premolars, in the upper premolars, all these stuffs were present before MBT system. So they said that by their clinical experience, they made a single prescription again because ND prescription was a very big prescription, 11 or 12 bracket sets. Roth was single bracket set, he became popular. And then he became an extra talk prescription. 
company said no we want to make a single talk prescription then another group of orthodontists become famous and they made a single talk prescription on company demand and that was fpt and they simply changed the mechanics nothing else the same you know the effective talk is the same and they made the mbt system which we are mostly using today and it has zero degree uh, like what you, as you see offset uh, tip in the lower arch zero degree in the upper arch the effective tip in the upper arch is 5 degree in the lower it's zero degree and if we see this talk and tip values most of are found in the literature uh, minus 6 was present in andrew system 17 degree was present in roth system and uh, 20 was not present in roth 20 also available so most of these values are present previously too so most of these tip values are present in and you you know translation series bracket so over the period of time a lot of prescriptions were made and uh, there is a fact that many of these prescription when the patent was over uh, the you know the person who actually gave this prescription simply disowned them they earned the money till the patent was there and later on they disowned them so there are different materials i want go in the in the manufacturing i mostly use steel if the patient is like what uh, allergic to steel i use titanium uh, i use um, a plastic bracket for some time but they were not very effective because of the creep and uh, in ceramics i mostly use polycrystalline brackets because uh, and in adults patients only and mostly in the upper arch i try to avoid them in the lower arch and i only do it on my private practice not in my hospital based practice i will simply give you some tips uh, simply check the material of the bracket the hardness of the bracket should not be more than the uh, you know Uh, 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 less than the wire, because if the hardness of the bracket is less than the wire, effective talk cannot be expressed. So I did some, you know, uh, experiment myself, and I came to know that in most of the cases, when the bracket are softer than the wire, right, uh, the slot open up, and when people buy smaller dimension wire, uh, even the you know companies make it with a more harder steel, but. Uh, because parts are miniature the slots open up so it look very fancy that you are buying a miniature bracket but you actually a problem in mechanics so in terms of you know uh, moment to force ratios uh, when i talk about moment to force ratio in first order the width of the bracket and plus as i told you if there are uh, anti rotational moment present in the bracket as in initially that was in endo system or roth system that is important in terms of second order bands right when you are retracting the canine the width of the bracket is important because wider the bracket less would be the contact angle more uh, movement of the couple would be generated and more boldly would be the translation in terms of third order bands uh, you know the dimension of the wire and uh, is important in break in terms of bracket the slot of the bracket is important smaller the slot like what in oven eight slot the torque is more effective because the wire engages the because torque is the distance between these two force points as you see in the second example so it is more important as compared to uh, you know the rest of the things so one it slot is more you know uh, effective in talk expression than a two to slot when it comes to talk because it generate a more movement of couple an important concept is uh, you know um, uh, tipping switching and uh, swapping and bending to give you a simple tip a simple belief uh for tip Mesial slot directly or closely, or upward in the lower arch before. I will go in the first example. Just keep. yes. So in the lower arch, the mesial slot of the bracket is upward, and if you align it, the root will go backward, right? 
So in low Raj, if the measles slot is upper, right? To, or my simple is if the measles slot of the bracket is toward the occlusal plane, either it's a lower bracket or, or it's upper bracket, right? Positive to, uh, tip would be expressed by the bracket, right? So if the measles slot, this is the measles slot, if this is upper, toward the occlusal plane, forget upper, toward the occlusal plane, positive tip would be expressed. And in terms of torque, I will explain the torque. Yes. In terms of torque, if the slot opening is toward the occlusal plane, right, when the tooth will, the straight wire will try to align it, positive torque would be expressed. So in terms of tip, if the slot opening is toward the occlusal plane, positive measles slot opening toward the occlusal plane, positive tip would be expressed. In terms of torque, if the slot opening is toward the occlusal plane, both in the upper and the lower arch, positive torque would be expressed. And if it's toward the away from the occlusal plane toward the gingiva, negative torque would be expressed. So these are some of the acromans uh, uh, which Muhammad al muzian used. And uh, I like this one, the second one, O23 M2 F3. O is the occlusal plane. If you move across the occlusal plane, like but from the lower to the upper arch, both first and second order bands are affected. If you cross the midline, the second order, uh, you know, the tip of the bracket could be reverse, right? If you cross the occlusal plane, both first and second order bend would reverse, or the tip and uh, uh, tip and torque would reverse. If you uh, cross the midline, the second order, uh, you know. Uh, uh, bands or uh, only the tip would reverse and f is if you flip the bracket if you upper you know uh, made it make it 180 degree uh, turn only the third order bands would, would be affected or it will reverse so i also made this chart i hope that will be clear because there are a lot of icons from zoom on it I think I also shared it once on Facebook. So many of you people know this. It's the same concept uh, written in a chart form. I'll give you some basic concept of bracket, uh, very basic. Like what in the literature, laser structure mesh, which is you know a patent of dentorum, this has the highest pause trend. Uh, I use it a lot. Uh, these brackets are wider, especially the discovery series brackets from dentorum. But later on, they became expensive and I started using other brackets like Gemini in 3M and Lancer Orthodontics. And this laser structured mesh was very, very good, but I used to recycle bracket for the same patient with flame method or sandblasting. And, uh, you know, uh, recycling was very poor for these brackets. So I mostly prefer 80 gauge, uh, you know, mesh. You know, this opening, they should be 80 opening uh, per inch of the bracket. And most of the adhesive, I especially use 3M bracket, uh, you know, etch that has the same consistency as lens. Also use the uh, etch uh, sorry, uh, the adhesive by Lancer or 3M. They have the same, you know, uh, consistency. So smaller the opening of this mesh, you will need a more, you know, a liquid uh, adhesive. Uh, wider the opening, you will need a more, uh, you know, less flow of adhesive in simple terms. So if you're buying 3M brackets, 3M adhesive is best for it. But if someone is buying a metal orthodox bracket, which has a 60 gauge mesh most of the time, uh, he might, he must use an adhesive which has, uh, you know, that is more viscous. Also, uh, you know, open bracket should not be bought. Most of these open brackets are Chinese made. And uh, sometime um, these packing are made by the local distributor. I, you know, discourage these types of packings and always buy packings which are sealed because I studied them under microscope and I found a lot of microorganism on these packings. And I think there's an also article published in 2016. Uh, I think it's Angle Orthodont in which they saw the bracket packings and the bracket bases when they came from the manufacturer and they found a lot of microorganisms for them. And they recommended that if possible, uh, some, you know, a sterilization should be done. I don't do it in my office, thank you. 
So wider the bracket, more the contact angle, less would be the friction, right? So that's a limitation of uh, low profile brackets, which are smaller. And the last one is about the hook of the bracket, because many people say that what is the fun of using hook? So these movements were made by angle. He said that the A, this A, that is a distance between the mid of the bracket slot to the center of resistance should be equal to B and C. But the problem is we, we cannot uh, make such a wider bracket. Uh, I think Prophet said that you cannot make a, uh, at least you should not make a, br a bracket wider than half of the, you know, uh, uh, mesial distal width of the uh, tooth. So they incorporated hooks in the uh, uh, system. So longer the hook uh, in buckle segment bracket, and if you are retracting it or misalizing it, less would be the loss of second order movement or tip of the uh, you know, tooth. So you will see that effective tip is uh, more. So uh, this is completed from my part because if there's some question you can ask me, I try my best to do it in one hour. Thank you so much, Professor Harris. It's been a very interesting lecture. And uh, I must say that you've covered quite a lot and a lot of concepts. Some of them probably are basic, but a lot of them are very advanced and they need quite a good amount of concentration. Uh, I must emphasize it will be available on YouTube for some time. If you, if you uh, attendees want to go back and look at it, I myself, I'm going to go back and look at it, I'm sure, just yes. to absorb all that information. It's, it just was bombarded on us so fast. Uh, I did uh, share in the chat uh, a Google form for anybody who wants a certificate of attendance. You can just go there and... Uh, fill in the form so that you can get a certificate of attendance. Also, please, if you have any questions, you can write them in the uh, chat section and I'll read them out for you. But I've got a few and the one is, uh, uh, you talked about open packages and I only posted yesterday uh, a post about dentarum refill brackets and that was uh, those tube, those refill brackets. Occasionally, they come in with a missing wing, and that was very confusing for me because Dentarum is a very prestigious uh, manufacturer. And have you encountered such a problem, doctor? And which wing was missing? The, usually, upper laterals, lower laterals. One of the wings will be just missing from the manufacturer. Yes, uh, I don't know about uh, uh, what's happening in Iraq, but like what we are bordering China, right? Yeah. And uh, I know that there are a lot of Chinese vendors here. You can give them an order that I need a bracket of dentarum, the same shape as dentarum, mm -hmm. and they can make a bracket mm -hmm. for you. So it's a common practice in Pakistan that the local distributor uh, mix the uh, Chinese dentarum brackets with the local, uh, you know, the dentarum brackets or the 3M brackets. It's very common in Pakistan. And 3M has eventually closed its business from Pakistan because of this reason. Because the local distributor was mixing a lot of Chinese 3M brackets with the original 3M brackets. So might be your distributors doing the same thing. Yeah, probably. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the uh, What year did uh, Roth Super brackets come out? Uh, like what Roth initially said that there should be one bracket set, right? Yeah. Later on, he came with a super set that has like what 17 degree torque on the central incisor and 10 degree torque in the upper lateral incisor. So like what he was a star for the companies when it, because he gave a solution for the companies, right? Uh, yeah. Like what the companies are pure businessmen. They see how much business can be done, right? If you talk with a company that I want to make a bracket set, they will say that, is it acceptable to the general dentist? Because if you see in Iraq, there would be one or 200 or 300 or 500 orthodontists, but yeah. there would be thousands of general dentists. So the companies are more focused for something that is for the general dentist, not for the specialist. So they want something that is uh, like both by the general dentist or, and uh, both by the orthodontist. So Roth gave a single set of brackets uh, from Andrew series of brackets from, you know, 12 or 11 series of brackets. So he became popular. Later on, he said this set cannot treat all the malocclusions, right? So he gave an extra set of super series. 
so he become less popular and then you know uh, mbt system came they again gave a single set of bracket and you know again we are going back for you know customized bracket we are stretching the case at the individualized level again so my question is uh, regarding did, did the super brackets come out first or the mbt no, brackets later. came they out they came on later later so there uh, he actually was inspired from mbt no that was before mbt ah uh, so mbt guys MBT were, is, impi- were yes. probably inspired from him no no yeah. mbt is basically a collection of uh, different sets from andrew system and roth system yeah they try to take the best of both worlds yes and uh, uh, regarding your book would you be interested in an arabic translation i can see a couple of uh, syrian uh, professors dr khaldun and dr jihad and uh, probably they will be interested in uh, translating it into arabic yes i will talk with the publisher uh, especially the kurishan publisher about my contract because uh, yeah i will talk that what is about the pictures because uh, i have this discussion before with them they said that they enjoy the rights of the picture that if someone share the picture without their consent uh, uh, they will go for a copyright violation so i will get back to you about this idea that if i want to go in arabic version i'm more than happy to do it but i have to talk with them about the pictures yeah i can understand that and uh, you you talked about that canines as the, as you're retracting them you lose tip yes and therefore you need to increase this tip and there is no uh, variable tip bracket in the market yes so how would you gain that would you rotate the tooth a little bit to rotate the bracket a little no. bit just to gain extra tip no uh, frankly i tell you uh in my experience power chain cause more rotation than elastics right so i tried to use lighter elastic initially i tried with uh, uh these uh, steel ligatures the problem was uh, that i was stretching it too much so someone told me that tight then give it one quarter tie backward but even then it was rotating so now i'm using elastic on night springs mostly elastics and i'm using uh, you know elastic ligatures if some rotation is there i don't bother i retract the incisors i go for a opg for before finishing to root the, see the root pelvis and when i come back to the lighter wire after changing some bracket positions because there is always error in my bracket positioning right so when i correct it uh, on a continuous wire the rotation is corrected there is always some rotation at least for me uh, it happens it happens yes. surely it happens and uh, the uh, did you notice that the talk difference between uh, roth and mbt in many occasions it's uh, plus 5 or plus or minus 5 degrees as if 5 was the magical number might be because in edrius uh, when he measured the normal occlusion he found that there is a difference of 4 degree between the central and the lateral incisor in all the cases right yeah so as i told you that if we see 12 uh, that is a difference of 5 but i think it was 8 degree uh, for the lateral incisor so the magical number do not fit there but north also made 17 degree i think it's 12 8 for the lateral incisor but lateral incisor and north system it's 8 degree i think yeah so uh last question from my side i've noticed that since i shifted to 1925 uh, wires that uh, the, there's a lot of bulging of the roots of the canines the upper canines especially they just uh, there's a lot of negative talk and a lot of bulging of the the have you noticed that in pakistani people or is it iraqis are just a little bit anatomically different uh like what most of my cases are, uh, are extraction cases right Yeah. but like what uh, there was a point i was doing most of my cases in non extraction but now i mean uh, uh, post grad teaching and most of the students want to give this mauth exam right any british exam because they are more acceptable than the local degrees yeah. so in british system if there is moderate or severe crowding they go for extraction rather than non extraction even for more than end on more relation they prefer the uh, you know extraction of upper premolar than distalization so might be we were doing more extractions 
so i have less of this problem because this problem was more with me when i was doing non extraction cases uh -huh. that's nice so uh does a uh, uh, there's a question here does the ethic ethnic group could correlate with the type of prescription used that means mbt could be good for one or not good for another and ethnic group yes there can be a reason like what you told me that you have this problem maybe i have not this problem like what uh, for our population i have this experience for ethnic group our zygomatic buttress area is not prominent right like the chinese they have a very mm -hmm. prominent area uh, uh, even for the cambodian i have seen uh, cases of adidya bigopal is playing zygomatic buttress implant and they are working quite well because that population has very prominent area it means that even if you give more negative talk on the molars that would be accommodated but in my population even in arab population the this buttress area is not prominent so if you give negative talk of i think minus 14 and that's effective many a times i feel the roots you know close to the uh, cortex so there are you know ethnic difference and that's why customization is coming into this bracket world and at some point in time you know uh, a customized bracket in house build might take you know uh, popularity before a liner takes over and the ligature ties uh, with power chains work best that's what you were talking about uh, one so, of the uh... class one elastics for me mm -hmm. elastics uh, you know elastic the conventional elastic the uh -huh. 5 by 16 elastics i mostly use 1 by 4 or 3 by 16 elastics right and uh -huh. for settling 5 by 16 and uh, 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 3 by 8 elastics, right? So I use elastics or nitisaplines. I do not use power chain. They accumulate a lot of things. And I've seen a lot of white spot lesions, rotation of teeth with power chains. So for smaller spaces, like what 1, 1.5 millimeter, I might use power chains. But for long, large spaces, I always use elastics. I rely on my patients. If it's not compliant, I go for nitisaplines. Uh -huh. And, and you would ask the patient to keep changing them? Yes. Uh -huh. That's so, so nice from you. And, uh, well, if there's uh, any more questions, we would address those. I have lifted the limits for people to speak up. Uh, Dr. Muna, if you'd like to say a word. I know you know Harris and uh, anybody of the audience, you're all invited to speak up and also before we end also i figured out a point a logic like what in mbt system and the original uh, you know uh, the talk of the molar was nine degree right they made it minus 14 degree because they said when you translate the molar it's minus uh, you know the pedal cusp hang to compensate it they do, did it but when we are going for a therapeutic class to finish right uh therapeutic class two, where the more relation is full cusp class two and we are taking the lower tube, which has a, a zero degree offset, yeah. but minus 10 degree torque. Yeah. So I don't know because some people say when the molar is coming forward in a therapeutic class two, you need ne less negative torque. And you, so minus 10 degrees favorable rather than taking yes. first molar that has minus 20 degree torque. Mm -hmm. Well, that wraps up the questions of, from our side. I really thank you quite a lot on behalf of the Iraq Orthodontic Society. We look forward to inviting you someday in person in Baghdad, and we'll be honored to receive you here someday, hopefully sure. once things are better. Thank yes. you so much for your thank time. You. Thank you for all the audience, and uh, we'll keep the uh, form of uh, attendance open for a while, so please register if you want a certificate. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Have, a nice, have a nice night. Goodbye, everyone.